Okay, everybody, welcome to this discussion on the great gun grab. In case you haven't noticed, there's a big agenda afoot here in this country to get guns away from Americans. And the only reason why we haven't seen the full outplay uh, in countries where this has already happened, like England, for example, right, where people don't have guns, is because they don't want America to see where this is going. Once they can get our guns, then we're going to see where this is all leading. You will have no defense against government tyranny. And that really is the reason for the Second Amendment. It even states it uh, right therein, right? Uh, you know, for people to defend themselves against not just thugs on the street, thugs in three-piece suits that walk the streets of Washington. You know, in years past, there were gun drives, right? They, they still happen on occasion, um, where, for example, local police departments will encourage people to hand in their unregistered weapons, you know, grandpa's old 22 up in the attic or whatever, right? No questions asked, just hand them in to make our streets safer. And people fell for this, right? And mass people all over the country were handing in these guns, thinking that, oh, well, you know, this is because the government is concerned about our safety and they want to stop gun-related crimes. Really? Is that the reason? Who complies with such programs? Is it Bobby the burglar? or Robbie the Rapist? No, it's the law-abiding citizen that complies. And those are the ones that they want to disarm. They don't care about criminals being armed, right? They're criminals themselves. They want crime to justify more uh, tyrannical legislation, right? They want the crime rate up, but they know that you, the average citizen, isn't gonna use guns to engage in criminal activity. You're gonna use your guns in the future to defend yourself against government thugs. They don't want that. If you look carefully at all of the pushes for, you know, gun registration, limitation on uh, gun permits, quote unquote, you shouldn't even have to have a permit or gun registration, right? In a country that's supposedly founded uh, on principles embodied in the Second Amendment, which states, the right to bear arms which shall not be infringed. That wording is put in there for a reason, right? The founders, the non-federalist, anti-federalist founders, put that in there for a reason. They knew what the federalists were after. The Judeo-Masonics, they knew what they were after. Absolute, complete, total tyranny is what they wanted. Despotism, right from the beginning, right? But they had to make some concessions so it would look good. They gave in for a time, but they figured, you know, over the, the ensuing, uh, over the following decades or centuries, however long it takes us, we're going to propagandize the public. We're going to dumb them down. We're going to convince them that guns are a bad thing. Well, look where we're at. Most people now, if you talk about gun rights, they, uh, associate you with, uh, you know, some crazy crackpot uh, dictator or something, uh, you know, an abuser of human rights. Uh, they don't realize. They have no clue. They've never been taught real history. They have no clue why the Second Amendment exists in the first place and what a danger we place ourselves in when we allow the government to trick us into giving up our Second Amendment rights, to giving up our guns, right? It's so in-your-face obvious, so blatantly obvious. People never stop to realize Washington, D.C. has some of the most stringent gun control laws in the country, and yet it has the highest rate of gun-related crimes in the country. Huh. Do you suppose there's a correlation? Of course there is. Criminals know that in areas where people are less likely to be armed are areas where you're going to more likely get away with your crimes, right? You're armed, the victim isn't. It's a no-brainer. They're much less likely to go into areas to commit crimes where they know the citizenry is armed. 
God damn it. Anyway, you know, the, 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 the phony 9-11 story, for those that buy it and think it played out the way we were told, something like that was not would not have been possible. Well, it wouldn't have been possible if the government actually did its job, right, and had F-15s and 16s up immediately as they should have. It could have stopped any of those planes from hitting their targets, right? But besides that, 9-11 wouldn't have been possible if people on those planes had guns to defend themselves, right? Cut the crap, man. Anyway, so how could these gun drives have anything to do with preventing gun-related crimes? They have nothing to do with it. Again, they simply want you, the law-abiding citizen, disarmed. They don't care about criminals being armed. They want that, right? It's so in-your-face obvious. Criminals never comply with, you know, legislation that restricts people's ability to get guns. They don't follow the law. It's like saying that passing more stringent drug laws is going to stop people from getting drugs. No, it isn't. Drug addicts are always going to get their drugs. It doesn't matter how many frickin' laws they pass. They're always going to get their drugs, right? They don't care about the law. They're not law-abiding. So, again, all of these gun legislation uh, you know, passages have nothing, nothing, nothing to do with making streets safer. Criminals are always going to get their guns, regardless how many laws they pass. That's it. Bottom line. How people can be so freaking blind to not see through this. And then you have all the school shootings helping to facilitate the public into becoming dumbed down and accepting the trampling of our Second Amendment rights. You stupid asses. It's so in your face. It's so transparent what they're doing with this crap, right? That's the first thing they talk about. That's all they talk about in the wake of every one of those fake staged shootings. And when I say fake, I don't mean fake in the sense that no one's ever shot. In some cases, yes, people are shot. They're fake because they're all government staged. It's so obvious just watching. You don't even have to look at these events closely to see that they don't add up, right? People who supposedly just lost their son or their daughter uh, earlier that day, they're smiling, waving at, at people in the camera, laughing to beat the band. Their eyes aren't red. There's no bags under their eyes showing that they've been crying or they haven't been sleeping uh, the past couple days. You know, no, no, no. Their eyes aren't bloodshot. You don't even have to look at all that. All the inconsistencies and the claims made about these shootings. You don't have to look at any of that. Just look at how no sooner does one of these shootings take place, or alleged shootings, and bang, there they are, talking about, we got to do something about the Second Amendment, we got to take guns off the streets. That's their only solution to the problem, right? That's the only one they want you to think is, you know, the solution, right? The truth is, when cities are armed, Criminals are far less likely to commit gun-related crimes uh, in those areas or even attempt to do so. It's a fact. Criminals know that people don't have guns uh, in D.C., right? And that's why they go there to commit their gun-related crimes. So much for gun control laws. Once again, look how they sucker you every Fargan time, and people fall for it every Fargan time. Under the pretext, again, of making our streets safer, El Governmente is seeking to disarm us through increasingly restrictive gun control laws, thus leaving us totally defenseless, not only against common thugs on the street, but against the government itself, the biggest thugs of all that want to implement martial law down the line, but don't dare do so as long as they know that the general public is armed to the teeth and can resist their tyranny. 
Just look at uh, Georgie Boy Jr.'s 2007 John Warner Defense Authorization Act, right? Which essentially trashes Posse Comitatus and the uh, Insurrection Act of uh, 1807. Why take such measures to enact martial law unless you are indeed planning to implement martial law? But again, they can't do it yet until they feel confident that enough people have been completely disarmed. Tommy Franks, in the December 2003 edition of Cigar Aficionado magazine, called for a military form of government. Did you know that? Rumsfeld, Myers, and Eberhardt uh, called for the same thing, a military form of government. This is what they want. They're licking their chops in anticipation of it. They can't wait, but they know they can't do it as long as too many people are armed with too many effective weapons. It's obvious that the government is after total power. But again, to pull this off, they need to get the population disarmed. Um, here's what the uh, communist rules of revolution states on this matter. This whole thing is right out of the Communist Manifesto, guys, disarming the people. Anyway, the communist uh, rules of revolution states, register all firearms under any pretext as a prelude to confiscating them. <laughs> Once you know who has them, you know where to go to get them. It's a prelude to confiscation. Of course, they don't tell you that, but that's exactly what the whole aim is for gun registration. Now compare this last quote with the next two astonishing quotes. Attorney General Janet Rhino under Clinton uh, was quoted by the Associated Press on December 10th of 1993 as stating, quote, waiting periods are only a step. Registration is only a step. The prohibition of firearms is the goal. Prohibition altogether. You get it? These how This is how these bastards work. It's how they've always worked. Incrementally, they introduce their tyranny, right? Slowly, gradually, so that they don't wake up the slumbering public. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shh. Go back to sleep. Everything's fine. We're taking care of everything for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's how they suckered you with the income tax, right? Oh, it's only 5%. And it's voluntary. And after the war, we're going to remove this tax. Right. Look where we're at now, baby. The impression is it's mandatory. It's the law. They take it out before you even get it. And you'll have a SWAT team at your door if you try to refuse, right? But it's all trickery. There's nothing legal about it. It's criminal. It's grand theft theft, baby. And so it is with all the gun registration laws. It's all trickery, baby. They're suckering you, fooling you once again to give up more of your rights to trust the boot that's kicking you in the teeth. Sarah Brady, chairman of Handgun Control, Inc., had this to say. Our main agenda is to have all guns banned. We must use whatever means possible. It doesn't matter if you have to distort facts or even lie. <laughs> and they do plenty of that, don't they? It doesn't matter if you have to distort facts or even lie. Our main agenda, she said, is to have all guns banned. Unbelievable. We must use whatever means possible. She went on to say, our task of creating a socialist America can only succeed when those who would resist us have been totally disarmed. Holy Shiite Muslim, man. Did you catch that? Our task of creating a socialist America, and remember, what does it really mean when they talk about socialism? It's communism, right? Socialism is just the wide open door leading 
to communism. It's the paved road to commie land. And she says, our task of creating socialism, i.e. communism in America, can only succeed when those who would resist us have been totally disarmed. Holy frickin' crap. Do you see now why, uh, in case you're not aware of it already, why I've said that all the school shootings are fake? Just looking at what they've said after every shooting, right? We gotta do something about the guns. There's too many guns. That alone should tell you they're fake. But oh, don't worry. I'll be doing a whole series down the line, a very lengthy series, addressing a, a lot of the major shootings that have gone on over the years, showing how every single one of them was staged. Every last one of them. There's no exception. Charles uh, uh, Crothamer nationally syndicated uh, columnist in the Detroit News, April 9th, 1996 edition, in an article called uh, Civilized Society Must Disarm Its Citizenry, stated, quote, ultimately, a civilized society must disarm its citizenry. Civilized. Notice how they're synonymizing being civilized with being disarmed. <laughs> Are you buying that, suckers out there? Ultimately, a civilized society must disarm its citizenry. Passing a law like the assault weapons ban is symbolic, purely symbolic, uh, a symbolic move in that direction. Its only real justification is not to reduce crime, but to desensitize the public to the regulation of weapons uh, in preparation for their ultimate confiscation. There you go. There's another twisted, treasonous little wretch telling you right out in your face, right out in the open, that the aim of gun registration and various other gun regulating uh, uh, laws is about ultimate confiscation. Just a step in that direction, right? Just like all of these regional unions, the EU, NAFTA, uh, Organization of uh, American States, you know, blah, blah, blah. All of this crap, CEDO, NATO, whether they're military in nature or economic, it doesn't matter. All of them are preludes to world government. Yet nations used to cooperating regionally first and then under one global umbrella. All the crap that they pull, guys, it's all designed to trick you, to get you incrementally toward uh, their control grid, right? So the iron fist can come slamming down on your head. The UN has not shied away from admitting over the years that its goal is to disarm all nations so that it has a monopoly on weapons, so that nations cannot defend themselves against its central tyrannical control. And they're doing it with individuals too, nation after nation, taking your guns so that you as individual citizens can't uh, resist your government's tyrannical control. They want everyone and every nation disarmed so they have a monopoly on weapons. That's their version of utopia, baby. There will be peace because no one will be able to rise up and resist their tyranny. At the 29 Palms uh, Marine Base near San Diego, California, a survey was given to Marine recruits on May 10th, 1994. This same survey was also given around the same time to U.S. Army Special Operations recruits. In this combat arms survey, recruits were asked if they agreed to the following. Under point number 45, it says, I am a United Nations fighting person. Did you catch that? What gives the military the right? to use U.S. soldiers to fight for a foreign entity. I am a United Nations fighting person. I serve in the forces which maintain world peace and every nation's way of life. I am prepared to give my life in their defense, meaning the United Nations. Gee, that's funny. I thought our soldiers uh, were supposed to defend the U.S. alone, yeah, that used to be the case, not anymore. Under point 46, it states, 
The U.S. government declares a ban on the possession, sale, transportation, and transfer of all uh, non-sporting firearms. This is a hypothetical scenario, right? A 30-day amnesty period is permitted for the firearms to be turned over to local authorities. At the end of this period, uh, a number of citizen groups refuse to turn over their firearms. Consider the following statement. I would fire upon U.S. citizens who refuse or resist confiscation of firearms, firearms banned by the U.S. government. Did you catch that? This survey was asking recruits, both in the Marines and the U.S. Army, back in the uh, early 90s, well, 1994, asking them if they would be willing as U.N. fighters, not U.S., U.N. fighters, uh, U.N. soldiers, you know, would they be willing to fire on American citizens if they refused to hand in their weapons? They took this survey because they wanted to know who they could uh, call upon in time of need like this, right? The ones who answered, yes, I'll fire on them, they kept them here. The ones who said, no, I would, wouldn't fire on fellow American citizens, they shipped them overseas. You get it? Amendment 2 of the U.S. Constitution states, a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It can't be stated any clearer than that. Shall not be infringed. And yet all of these gun regulation laws are a complete affront to the Second Amendment, aren't they? To the Constitution. Despite this clear wording, U.S. citizens today are being arrested for possessing a gun without a permit without a license. The Constitution is their permit and their license. God damn it. And it's been the UN behind the push for all of this all along, right? Member states are obliged to comply with UN resolutions. The UN has had many resolutions calling for the disarmament, not only of nations as a whole, but individual citizens as well. Charles Hanley, in the Washington Times, May 24th, 1994 edition, in an article called World Gun Control is UN Body's Aim, stated, quote, so quietly that even the gun lobby hasn't noticed, the United Nations is beginning to set its sights on global gun control. The UN Disarmament Commission has adopted a working paper that proposes tighter controls on the gun trade in the United States and other member nations as a way of combating international arms trafficking. Later on, in a related article on the same page of this same edition of the Washington Times, we read this. The Clinton administration has agreed to participate in a discussion of ways for the United Nations to control the manufacture of guns and their sales to civilians. This represents the first UN effort to foster regulation of the multi-million dollar uh, trade in small arms. The UN working paper, mentioned in the above quote, declares that governments individually are impotent to deal with global arms trafficking and proposes uh, harmonization of gun control standards around the world under the UN's banner uh, to make trafficking easier to spot and prevent. The arms uh, permitted for civilian use should be subject to controls at all points in the chain from production and or acquisition up to the time that they are sold to an individual. They want absolute control over the whole thing to closely scrutinize and only allow you basically to get a goddamn BB gun is what they're saying, right? If that. From then on, uh, they should remain subject to monitoring and control, the paper says. Any harmonization would inevitably 
mean tightening controls on the loosely regulated U.S. gun business. That's the one country more than any other they've had their crosshairs on, right? On September 25th, 1999, the BBC aired UN Targets Small Arms, in which it was reported that uh, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan at the time, quote, told a special meeting of the Security Council that member states should adopt gun control laws, including a prohibition of private ownership of small arms. It's not just assault rifles, baby. Small arms, small handguns. They want all of them. God damn it. They want all your guns and all for your safety and protection, of course. Right? <laughs> the same ones who were compelling you and did indeed succeed in compelling billions around the world to roll their sleeves up the past three years, almost going on four years now. Well, three years since the damn thing came out. To take the toxic jab in your veins, right? These are the ones that want to take your guns to keep you safe, right? Do you not see the connection between the U.S. government and the U.N. pushing for gun control? Do you see where this is coming from? The whole purpose, again, for the Second Amendment was to enable we, the people, to defend ourselves against primarily government abuse or to serve as a buffer to prevent the government from becoming abusive in the first place. We see this point echoed numerous times in the writings of several founding fathers. Let's look at some examples. Noah Webster, examination into the leading principles of the federal constitution, published in 1787, stated, before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed as they are in almost every kingdom in Europe. The supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and can be, on any pretense, raised in the United States. Exactly. James Madison, Federalist Paper, number 48, states, Americans never need fear their government because of the advantage of being armed, which the Americans possess over the people of almost every other nation. Well, that's starting to change now, isn't it? All through history, gun control has spelled nothing but disaster. Let's look at some examples. Uh, under the uh, Ottoman Turks, 1915 to 1917, uh, the, there were gun control laws passed targeting mostly uh, Armenians, Christians particularly. One to 1.5 million victims suffered as a result of this because of government abuses. Articles uh, of law were passed such as uh, 166, Penn Code 1866, 1911, uh, proclamation in 1915, you know, blah, blah, blah. Several laws were passed, notice, incrementally, each one becoming more intrusive into people's gun-bearing rights. And as they became more intrusive, more guns were seized, the people became disarmed, and thus now they were uh, sitting ducks for government abuses, right? These laws required uh, permits, uh, list of gun owners were made, a ban on possession of certain firearms. Does any of this sound familiar? Under the uh, In the Soviet Union from 1929 to 1945, um, more gun legislation was passed there. 20 million suffered because of this because they were disarmed against government abuses under uh, Stalin uh, particularly, right? And mostly the victims targeted were farming communities. Several resolutions were passed in 1918. Uh, the decree of July 12th, uh, 1920, Article 59 and 182, uh, Penn Code of 1926, 
These laws required licensing of owners, a ban on possession, and severe penalties were meted out to those who didn't comply. On and on it goes here, guys. I, 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 you know, China did the same thing, 1927 to 1949. Um, the targets were political opponents, army con conscripts, and whatnot. Ten million are estimated to have died at the hand of government abusers, uh, government thugs who were armed against the newly disarmed populace because of laws like uh, Article 205, Criminal Code 1914, Article 186 and 187 of Criminal Code uh the criminal code from 1935. Uh, again, government permit uh, systems were set up. There were bans on private ownership of various weapons. Look at this. Look at the pattern. How stupid people are for thinking that they can trust this or any other government to take its guns away and think that that's going to amount to their safety and security. You freaking kidding me. Anyway, we could go on and on here. Uh, the same thing was done in Guatemala, 1960 to 1981. All kinds of oppressive, uh, very restrictive gun legislation passed. Uh, and bang, the next thing you know, it's estimated that between 100 to 200,000 people died from government abuses because they were disarmed against a heavily armed criminal thug government. The same thing was done in Uganda, 1971 to 1979. An estimated 300,000 people died from government ab uh, abuse using guns against them because they were recently disarmed. Cambodia, uh, from 1975 to 1979, an estimated 2 million people died because of government gun-related abuses against the citizenry that had recently been disarmed, tricked into giving up their guns. Rwanda, back in 1994, remember the famous slaughter there? Uh, the Tutsis were targeted by the Hutus. 800,000 died because all they had were machetes against the heavily armed uh, Hutus, right? And this was all done at the behest of the frickin' UN, baby. Decree law number 12 in 1979 is what laid the groundwork for this. Again, at the behest of the UN. U.S. federal gun legislation over the years has always come about by Jews. Did you know that? Always at the hand of Jews. Let's look at a brief history of this, spanning the years 1968 to 2005. In 1968, there was the Gun Control Act of 68, which came from Congressman Emanuel Sellers House Bill HR 17735. It expanded legislation already attempted by the uh, non Jewish Senator Thomas Dodd, but a Jewish puppet. Uh, thus, America's biggest and most far reaching gun law came from a Jew. Again, Sellers uh, legislation of 68. In 1988, Senator Howard uh, Metzenbaum sponsored Senate Bill S-1523. It proposed legislation turning every violation of the Gun Control Act of 1968 into a RICO um, predicate offense, allowing a gun owner to be charged with federal racketeering offenses. Unbelievable all at the hand of a Jew. Also in 1988, Senator Howard uh, Metzenbaum, co-sponsor uh, of uh, S-2180, called for a ban or a limit or a restriction on so-called plastic guns. In 1990, Senator Herbert Cole, a Jew, introduced Bill S-2070, the uh, Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990, which banned gun possession in a school zone. The law 
was later struck down uh, in court as unconstitutional. But these bastards are relentless, right? In 1993, Senator Howard Metzenbaum again sponsored Senate Bill S-653. Look how relentless just this one scoundrel was. This piece of legislation banned specific semi-automatic rifles, but also gave the Secretary of the Treasury the power to add uh, any uh, semi-automatic firearm to the list at a later date. It was a blank check piece of legislation, right? February of 1994, the Brady Law, which required waiting periods to buy handguns, became uh, effective. Senator Howard Metzenbaum once again wrote this bill. He also sponsored the bill uh, in the Senate. The sponsor of the bill in the House was Congressman Charles Schumer, a Jew, of course, naturally. Guys, it's always been Jews, always. 1994, Senator Howard Metzenbaum once again introduced S-1878, the Gun Violence Prevention Act of 1994, a.k.a. Brady II. Congressman Charles Schumer sponsored Brady II uh, sister legislation, H.R. 1321, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Jews every time. September of 1994, the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994 went into effect, including a provision that bans the manufacture and possession of semi-automatic rifles described as assault weapons. Notice, they always got to put those words in there to scandalize, propagandize the, the, the public with their BS, right? True assault weapons are fully automatic, not semi-automatic. Anyway, this gun ban provision was authored in the Senate by Senator uh, Diane. Feinstein, and uh, authored in the House by uh, Congressman Charles Schumer, once again, right? Old Chucky boy Schumer. Jew, 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 Jew across the board. 1995, Senators Cole, Specter, Mr. Magic Bullet Specter, uh, Feinstein, uh, Lautenberg, and others introduced the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1995, an amended version of the 1990 school zone law, uh, which was struck down in court as being unconstitutional, as I mentioned earlier, right? Look how relentless the bastards are, and look how these bastards are all Jews, all of them. Cole, Specter, Feinstein, Laudenberg, on and on and on. Schumer, right? Jews. And when they don't succeed one day, they step back a little, wait, you know, a short time, two, three, four years, five, and they're at it again. September 1996, the uh, Lautenberg domestic confiscation uh, provision became law. It was part of a larger um, omnibus appropriations bill. It was sponsored by Senator Frank Lautenberg, a Jew, of course. Once again, this guy keeps popping up again and again, doesn't he? Uh, it banned people uh, convicted of misdemeanors. Um, misdemeanor, you know, domestic violence uh, charges from ever owning a gun. Again, notice always incremental and always seemingly um, a good thing, right? You don't want people who are charged, even though it was a misdemeanor domestic violence charge, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't want people like that owning a gun, right? And so people say, oh yeah, I, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. And then the next piece of legislation, oh, I guess that makes sense too. Each one seems to make sense on the surface, but when it's all said and done, you look back, now all your rights are gone to bear arms, right? 
Everybody now is banned from owning guns because you were tricked into it incrementally. 1997, Senate Bill S-54, the Federal Gang Violence Act of 1997, proposed much harsher sentences for people violating minor gun laws, including mandatory prison sentences and forfeiture of property. It was introduced by Senator Dianne Feinstein and Senator Hatch, uh, among others. Jews once again. It returned the idea of turning every violation of the Gun Control Act of 1968 into a RICO uh, predicate offense. January 1999. Look at this, guys. Almost every year in the decade of the 90s had a piece of sleazy Jew-created uh, gun control legislation scheme, right? January 1999, Senator Barbara Boxer, Jew, introduced Bill S-193, the American Handgun Standards Act of 1999. Also in January of 99, Senator Herbert Cole, again, the same Jew I mentioned a few moments ago, introduced Bill S-149, the Child Safety Lock Act of 99. It required a child safety lock in connection with a transfer of a handgun. All, you know, again, all designed to, to look good on the surface, but just more, more steps, if nothing else, to make guns look bad, to demonize them, right? February 1999, the following month, Senator Frank Laudenberg introduced S-443, the Gun Show Accountability Act of 1999. March uh, of 99, the following month, three months in a row, we had all these multiple pieces of Jew-orchestrated legislation uh, being run through, right? In this month of 99, Senator Frank Laudenberg introduced Bill uh, S-560, the Gun Industry Accountability Act of 1999. Look how these bastards licked their chops to pass every conceivable piece of legislation to cover every conceivable angle of your gun rights, right? To take them away, to whittle them away bit by bit. Also in March of 99, Senator, Senator Dianne Feinstein introduced Bill S-594, uh, the Large Capacity Ammunition Magazine Import Ban Act of 1999. Uh, they skipped a month. But then in May, they're at it again. Oh, actually, no, this is May of 2000. They skipped a little bit more than a year. In May of 2000, Senators Feinstein, Boxer, Laudenberg, and Schumer, the same Jews keep popping up, don't they? Uh, they sponsored Senate Bill S-2515, the Firearm Licensing and Record of Sale Act of 2000. It was a plan for a national firearms licensing system. January of 2001, Senators Feinstein, Schumer, and Boxer sponsored Senate Bill S-25, the Firearm Licensing and Record of Sale Act of 2001. It was a nationwide gun registration plan. Apparently, uh, there were two versions of that Firearm Licensing and Record of Sales Act bill. May of uh, 2003, Senators Feinstein, Schumer, and Boxer, again, the same Jew names, along with several others, introduced legislation that um, uh, reauthorized the 1994 Federal Assault Weapons Ban and closed a loophole in the law that allowed uh, large capacity ammunition magazines to be imported into the US. The ban expired in September of uh, 2004, but as I said, guys, they're relentless, right? October 2003, Senators Feinstein, Laudenberg, Levin, and Schumer co-sponsored Bill S-1774, designed to stop the uh, sunset or ending clause of the um, 
Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988. March of 2005, Senator Frank Laudenberg introduced Bill S-645, quote, to reinstate the public safety and recreational firearms use protection act in other words to reinstate the 1994 assault rifle ban also known as the violent crime control and law uh, enforcement act of 1994 which expired in late 2004 so they wanted to revive this now right march 2005 senator diane feinstein uh introduced bill s620 to reinstate the Public Safety and Recreational Firearms Use Protection Act, in other words, to reinstate the 1994 Assault Rifle Ban uh, Act, right, um, which expired in uh, late 2004. July 2005, Senator Feinstein again introduced Bill SA 1621, a 50 caliber sniper weapons uh, ban. This amendment converted all uh, 50 gauge BMG firearms to NFA weapons. July 2005, Senator Feinstein introduced Bill SA 1622, 50 caliber uh, exclusion to S397. This amendment modified S-397, allowing uh, suits when the firearm involved was uh, 50 caliber, a 50 caliber weapon. July 2005, Senator Barbara Boxer introduced Bill SA-1633, uh, BATF Safety Standards. This amendment allowed uh, lawsuits to continue and be uh, brought if the product did not meet the safety standards as defined by the BATF, right? So you can shut down manufacturers. July 2005, Senator Barbara Boxer introduced Bill SA 1634, sporting use on domestic handguns. Applying sporting use uh, clause requirements to uh, domestic handguns could almost completely dry up the handgun availability in the United States all on its own. Anyway, that's just a brief historical overview. There's been others passed since then, but always, always, always at the hand of Jews. So isn't it comforting? Doesn't it warm your heart and even put a tear in your eye that it's Jews that have so much concern for our safety. How funny that it's always Jews, the ones pushing for the new world order, the ones who want global tyranny, yeah? And they're the ones pushing for gun control legislation. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, I tell you, man. There's got to be justice sooner or later. And there has to come a time when we as Gentiles will put our feet down collectively and say, never again, never again will you bastards screw up our world like you've done so many times in the past. Corrupt our governments, corrupt our monetary system, rigged our economies so that we barely scrape by working 60, 70, 80 hours a week with no benefits while you bastards lounge and dine at the finest uh, cuisine restaurants that money can buy, right? It's got to stop, folks. It's either them or us. Either they go or we do. What's it going to be? All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, lots more to come. Catch you in the next video. Take care.